Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. We're dedicated to delivering quality auto parts, expert customer service, fast and free shipping, all backed by our 100% satisfaction guarantee. So visit us at 1AAuto.com, your trusted source for quality auto parts. In this video, we're going to be working with our 2011 Chevy Camaro 3.6 liter V6 manual transmission. We're going to show you how to remove and replace your vehicle's rear CV axle shaft. We are doing this on the passenger side, but the procedure should be the same on the driver's side. If you like this video, please click subscribe. We have a ton more information on this and many other vehicles. And if you ever need parts for your car, you can follow the link down in the description over to 1AAuto.com. Here are the items you'll need for this repair. Using a 22 millimeter socket and a breaker bar, loosen all of your lug nuts. Raise and support your vehicle. We're using a lift to make it easier to show you what's going on, but this job can easily be done at home on a jack and jack stands. Remove your lug nuts. Remove your wheel and tire. Using a 32 millimeter socket and a breaker bar with the vehicle in gear, and the parking brake on will loosen our axle nut. Now these are one time use, so if you remove this, be sure you have a new one to reinstall when you're done. Once we get it loosened up, we'll switch over to a socket and ratchet. Place a punch in the center section of the axle and tap the splines loose. All of the bolts on your caliper being the two 14 millimeters on the pins and the two 16s securing it to the knuckle are one-time use. So if you remove any of this hardware, be sure you have OE replacements with you. We are not going to remove the caliper for this. We're going to move the bracket and caliper as a whole. So we're gonna use our 16 millimeter socket and ratchet to loosen and remove the bolts. Make sure you have a bungee cord or some mechanics wire or zip tie handy so you can secure your brake caliper out of the way without putting strain on the rubber hose. Using a T30 Torx bit and ratchet, remove your rotor screw. Release your e-brake. You may need to use a hammer to release your rotor. If you're going to be reusing it, you're going to want to hit the face and not the edges. This will free it up without damaging the contact surface of the rotor. Remove the two 13 millimeter bolts at the bottom and the one on the top, securing the wheel hub and bearing assembly to the knuckle. So here we've set up our two jaw puller to remove the hub while simultaneously pushing the CV axle shaft out of its splines. We'll just tighten that down with a 16 millimeter socket and ratchet for our particular tool. They also have a variety of different hub pullers as well as slide hammers, but if you want to keep a wheel bearing in good shape, a slide hammer is not the tool you want to use. Using a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet, remove the bolt on the ABS sensor, securing it to the hub. We've removed the wheel bearing as well as the ABS sensor in order to remove our CV axle. And while this may not be completely necessary, it does give you a lot more room to safely remove the axle without risk of it binding or breaking the sensor. Wiggle the sensor and remove it from the wheel hub. Using a small flat blade screwdriver or a right angle pick, you'll need to grab this spring washer as their one time use. So we'll need to change this out before we put our new hub on. Just go ahead and work that off the end of your CV axle and throw it away. Remove the 18 millimeter bolt securing the knuckle to the upper control arm with an 18 millimeter socket, ratchet, and a wrench.
Using an 18 millimeter socket ratchet, we'll remove the bolt for this lateral arm here. Using an 18 millimeter wrench, a socket and ratchet, we'll loosen both of the lower control arm bolts. We're not going to take these out. We just want to take the pressure off so we can move the steering knuckle a little more freely. You may need to use two wrenches for the forward lower control arm just because it's in kind of a tight place. Pull down on the top of the steering knuckle and you should be able to work the CV axle out and set it off to the side. Now if you have a CV axle puller, that's usually the best way to do this, but without the tool, you can get pry bars evenly on each side of the joint, and usually just a little bit of pressure. We'll pop it out of socket, and we do have a drain bucket set up underneath the differential because sometimes it will leak just a little bit of fluid out of the seal. Once you get that end popped out, you should be able to completely remove your axle from the vehicle. Line up the splines into the differential. Reinstall your CV axle. Pry down on the knuckle and reinstall your CV axle. Reinstall the bolt for the lateral arm. I'm just gonna get that started by hand for now. We'll then slide the knuckle and the upper control arm back together. Reinstall that bolt as well and get the nut started on the back. Since we're using a lift, we're gonna use screw jack to put our vehicle at ride height. If you're doing this on a jack stand, you can easily achieve this with just a regular floor jack. All we're trying to do is jack it up, compress the suspension to about where the vehicle would ride at. So when we torque these bolts down, our bushings are preloaded at ride height and not full droop. We'll start by tightening down our adjustable link nut with an 18 millimeter socket and ratchet. We'll then torque this bolt to 103 foot-pounds. We'll now snug the upper control arm nut and bolt with our 18 millimeter socket, ratchet, and wrench. We'll then torque to 44 foot-pounds. We'll then add 90 degrees. We'll retorque the lower control arm bolt to 30 foot pounds. We'll then add 120 degrees. The trailing arm bolt at the knuckle should also be torqued to 30 foot pounds and then 120 degrees. I don't have a way of getting a torque wrench in there, so we're just going to tighten it up with a pair of 18 millimeter wrenches. Then lower your screw jack or floor jack. Install the new spring washer or spacer onto your axle fully before installing the wheel hub. Install the wheel bearing and hub assembly onto the splines of the CV axle. Start all three of your 13 millimeter wheel hub bolts before tightening any of them down fully. This will help line the hub up and suck it into the knuckle. Tighten the bolts down with a 13 millimeter socket and ratchet. We're just going to snug them now and then we'll torque them. We'll then torque the hub bolts to 85 foot pounds. Reinstall your wheel speed sensor into the hub and tighten down the 10 millimeter bolt. Reinstall your rotor 
Just use a T30 Torx bit on an extension or a T30 Torx screwdriver if you have one. And I'm just gonna snug that rotor screw in. It doesn't really do anything structural, it just holds this in place to make installing the caliper easier. So as long as you get it on there tight and this isn't moving, you should be fine. Reinstall your caliper and carrier onto the rotor and put your two new 16 millimeter bolts through the knuckle and into the carrier. We'll then snug them down with a 16 millimeter socket and ratchet before torquing and putting the torque angle on the bolts. Torque the bolts to 30 foot-pounds, then add 90 degrees. Install a new axle nut, tighten it down with a 32 millimeter socket and ratchet. Torque the axle nut to 200 foot-pounds. Reinstall your wheel and tire and get all five of your lug nuts on as tight as you can by hand. You may also use a 22 millimeter socket to help you spin these in. Lower your vehicle back onto its wheels. You can now torque your lug nuts to 140 foot-pounds in a cross pattern. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.